I'm John Woodland and we're coming to you live from the busy foyer of the Conservatorium in Stellenbosch, South Africa. Thanks very much for joining us. Tonight's concert begins at 8pm South African time and as the audience makes its way into the Endler Hall, let me tell you a bit of what you can expect on tonight's programme. Setting the tone for the three student orchestral concerts over the next few evenings, tonight's faculty concert has a symphonic feel with some larger works than the ones we've heard over the previous evenings. We begin in the Baroque with music by Vivaldi, the concerto for four violins in B minor RV 580, and that's followed by another concerto, the cello concerto number no. one by Shostakovich, featuring Alexander Buzlov as soloist and a South African premiere tonight. After the interval, the double bass have its moment to shine, along with the violin in the grand duo concertante by Bottasini, and ending the evening with a nod to the contemporary, that ACDC hit that made the duo two cellos famous in a spe special arrangement for the SICMF Thunderstruck. In the interval tonight, I'll be speaking to visiting faculty artist and trombonist Weston Sprott, and while we wait for the last seats to fill up, here's a message from the SICMF team. The one thing that you want to, to give these students is just the exposure. They just need to know what's out there because it's hard to reach for something when you don't know what it is that you're reaching for. The Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival needs your support. In an environment where funding for education in the performing arts is difficult to secure, the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival has run an annual festival for 10 consecutive days in the month of July since 2004. Chamber music is an ideal forum for multiracial community interaction and social cohesion and the SICMF is proud to be making a difference to the quality of life and potential employability of around 300 music students annually. In terms of repertoire, uh, I think it's fair to say there's no other festival quite like this. You realize the desire to learn is very high and you don't want to extinguish that flame, you want to, to, to feed it. You want students to, to want to take advantage of learning. The SICMF has established trusts in both the USA and UK, and it is now possible for citizens of South Africa, the USA and the UK to make tax-deductible donations to the SICMF in their respective countries. All banking details for SICMF donations can be found on our website, www.sicmf.coza. Sit back and relax in the comfort of your home and watch the SICMF faculty concerts right here on our live streaming channel from 6 to 15 July. The Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival, where world-class performance and first world music education enable and uplift. And welcome back to this live stream from the 2019 Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival, our seventh and final faculty concert. Let me tell you a little more about the first work on tonight's program, the Concerto for Four Violins in B Minor, Opus 3, Number 10, RV 580, lots of numbers, by Vivaldi. Yeah, just go there for now. Leave. This evening's faculty concert opens with the concerto for four violins in B minor by Vivaldi, and it comes from his collection, The Harmonic Inspiration. It's a collection of string works that was published in Amsterdam in 1711 and was widely played and well known throughout Europe during the first half of the 18th century. The Opus 3 set was most likely a product of Vivaldi's involvement at an orphanage for girls in Venice, famed for its musicians, and the set was dedicated to the patron of the orphanage. It also served as a religious institution, and Vivaldi was an ordained priest, hence his nickname, the Red Priest, due to his red hair. 
this publication of the first set of concertos in 1711 was not only the most important event in Italian orchestral music of the first half of the 18th century, but probably the most important work in all European orchestral music. It took the weighty Roman concerto style of Corelli and infused it with a lightness, a muscularity and a virtuosity that determined the history of the genre. This concerto is a three-movement work for four solo violins and it comprises an opening allegro followed by a central larghetto that features a shivering central episode that predicts the snowy central movement of the winter concerto from the four seasons and the closing allegro follows immediately and contains scintillating episodes for the four soloists. Let's move back inside the hall as I tell you who the soloists are. Mark Bushkov, Andrei Bilov, Madeleine Atkins and Suzanne Martens in this concerto for four violins in B minor, RV 580, in three movements by Vivaldi. A reminder if you've just joined us that this is a live broadcast, a live stream from the 16th Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. Tonight is our seventh faculty concert coming to you live from the Endler Hall. And we have a great variety in the music presented tonight, starting off in the Baroque with Vivaldi and then going to Shostakovich. After the interval, the grandeur concertante by Bottasini, and then a very unusual work, a nod to the contemporary, the ACDC hit Thunderstruck that's been specially commissioned for this festival, featuring four cellists, Alexander Buzlov, David Cohen, Peter Martens, and Colette Brand, and will be finishing off tonight's concert. It's been another full day here at the SICMF. We started off with a student ensemble concert at 1 o'clock this afternoon. That was in the Fismo Hall and there was another such concert at 5 p.m. And then Andre Bilov presented his master class this afternoon for violin with three students. And at 7 o'clock there was a conversation between Demar McGill, flautist and Weston Sprott, trombonist in the Janusz Hall. And I'm going to be talking a little more to Weston Sprott this evening in the interval. All the camera work that's part of this SICMF uh, is done by students from the Music for Memphis initiative. They're visiting us from the States. And tonight, it's Amaya that we're seeing in the camera. Hello. <laughs> Wave to the world. And back to the hall. You can see John Rennie and his wife Tamara sitting down in the back row there. <laughs> You may remember that we had some wet weather at the start of this week. It was quite sort of cold and miserable in Stellenbosch, but that's cleared up and there's been a series of really beautiful, um, the, some of the Cape's best winter days over the last few days, which makes getting around the town a lot easier. This afternoon in the student ensemble lunch hour concert, various groupings of the students who've been working with their tutors and together this week to present uh, their chamber works, uh, played music by Holst, Beethoven, Debussy, Schumann, Mendelssohn, and then this afternoon's ensemble concert featured music by Ibert and Doppler, also Mendelssohn, some more Beethoven, so a whole bunch of names, old and new, some better known, some lesser known as part of this Chamber Music Festival. 
And tonight, I think, is a very good example of well-known, lesser-known, some new contemporary, starting off with Vivaldi, then to Shostakovich, this cello concerto, which I still can't quite believe is the South African premiere, but that's what the program says. It's such a famous work, an important part of the repertoire. It's strange to think that it hasn't yet been performed in this country. But we'll be hearing none other than Alexander Buzlov playing that a little bit later with Pedro Carniero conducting. In fact, it's a whole series of concerti this evening, starting with the Vivaldi concerto for four violins and then moving on to the Shostakovich cello concerto and then this grand duo concertante, which I suppose in some ways is a mini concerto for violin and bass and then this um, <laughs> quadruple concerto by uh, ACDC at the very end. You will have noticed that the lights have gone down in the house, which means it's almost time for our first work this evening, the Concerto for Four Violins in B minor by Vivaldi, opening the seventh faculty concert. Well, it looks like Peter Martens, festival director, is going to say a few words beforehand. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me great pleasure this evening as we present some supreme Russian artistry as well as some wonderful Russian music uh, to present to you from the consulate in the Russian consulate in Cape Town, the vice consul, uh, Denis Belarus. Hello everyone, it's quite an audience. Thank you for coming. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, organizers, performers, all protocol observed, good evening. Uh, it's a great pleasure to address you ahead of an amazing performance by some of the performers who are my compatriots, who are recurring guests in this country. What is bound to increase our enjoyment is the fact that the Cello Concertino No. 1 is going to be formed by Alexander Buzlov, It was created by one of the most widely known Russian composers, Dmitry Shostakovich. Speaking of famous Russian composers and gifted musicians, I'm happy to note that they are represented quite extensively in this country. The vast majority of classical musical, music events feature masterpieces either composed or performed by Russians. The 16th Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival is no exception. What also gives me pleasure is the fact that Russians and South Africans seem to share a passion for beautiful music and an ability to appreciate it in its diversity regardless of one's cultural background. Russia has produced many brilliant musicians and composers who managed to combine classical compositional forms with the elements of national traditions and folklore. Thanks to this, Russian classical music has universal appeal and has long ago become an integral part of the world's most treasured cultural heritage. Tonight's concert is a fine example of that. So, let me not keep you waiting any more longer. Please enjoy the concert. Thank you.
what a way to start off the seventh and final faculty concert from the 16th International Stellenbosch Chamber Music Festival. That was the concerto for four violins in B minor, opus three, number 10, RB580 by Vivaldi. And our four soloists, you can see, taking a well-deserved bow there are Mark Bushkov, who's just flown in from the Tchaikovsky International Competition, silver medalist there, Andre Bilov, Madeline Atkins, and Suzanne Martins. There we go. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is a surprise announcement. Um, as is tradition on the seventh faculty concert, we always give out special awards to participant faculty members. And we have an award that we'd like to give to a true Baroque star who is jetting off to the airport right away. He's going to jump into a car. So we'd like to present this year's Baroque Star Award to Mark Bushkov. It's his first time at the festival this year. And and this award and this award goes to him for receiving the loudest applause before playing a single note last Friday night. So enjoy this one. Yes, Mark Bushkov, it's been a great privilege to have you at this year's festival. We're going to miss you. Safe travels and hope to see you back again next year. I should just mention who the other players were in that piece. We heard Farida Bakharova, Joshua Louis, and Zoe Lightly, violin one. Jeffrey Armstrong, Jordan Brooks, and Craig Williams, violin two. Eric Faust and Rory Africa, viola. David Cohen, cello. And Francis Levanderis, bass, Eric Dupinar, harpsichord. And so, following Vivaldi is one of the most famous works of 20th century music, Shostakovich's Cello Concerto No. 1 in E-flat major, Opus 107, which premiered in 1959 and is premiering in South Africa tonight. The work was written for and is dedicated to the famous cellist Rostropovich, who died only in 2007 and was a close friend of Shostakovich's. The two came to know one another at the Moscow Conservatory, where Rostropovich was a student in Shostakovich's composition class. The concerto is a work of significant technical difficulty, and it was inspired by the similarly challenging Sinfonia Concertante by Prokofiev, which Shostakovich heard in 1952, that was also premiered by Rostropovich, and incidentally, which we heard at the last Cape Philharmonic Orchestra's symphony season. Shostakovich's cello concerto features numerous distortions and transformations of the composer's DSCH signature, that's the notes D, E flat, C, B natural, chancing them for you now. Shostakovich also quotes a theme from Mussorgsky, his Songs and Dances of Death, in addition to a love song reportedly beloved of Stalin. And once you've heard this concerto's opening motif, if you don't know it, played by the cello, you're unlikely ever to forget this four-note theme. It's very developed and taken into successively higher registers of the solo instrument. This local or little motif dominates the entire movement and more. And an insistent second theme appears a little later, and the music gradually gains in excitement and technical virtuosity. The remaining movements are played without pause. First we hear a slow movement, although it's marked moderato, featuring after a dreamy introduction, a very simple folk-like melody. And the introductory material is heard again, followed by a more passionate new idea, leading to a climax and a return of the folk-like theme in high-pitched cello harmonics. And the third movement is lengthy, unaccompanied cadenza, begins slowly and becomes faster and faster and leads directly into the exuberant finale which opens with a dance tune, not an ordinary dance tune but one spiced with many chromatic half steps that give it a striking sarcastic overtone. And so let's head back into the hall to see how the rearrangement of the stage is going for this cello concerto number no. one in E flat, opus 107 by Shostakovich. And we're going to hear, as you heard a bit earlier, from the visiting uh, member of the Russian consul, Alexander Buzlov, solo cello, and Pedro Carniero, 
conductor. And the orchestra, which by now is probably uh, filling the entire stage, comprises SICMF faculty and participants. So let's pop back inside the Endler Hall, see how things are going for this cello concerto by Shostakovich. Yes, one would hardly call this sort of chamber music with a number of uh, chairs and later musicians on the stage. But as you can see, the Endler Hall is full this evening. A great um, sort of show of support for this wonderful music. And I guess Cape Tonians have now had their last chance to see Mark Bushkov in action. Incidentally, Alexander Buzlov, who's playing tonight's concerto, was here last year, not only for the Chamber Music Festival, um, but also to play the Lalo Cello Concerto with the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra. And so he's also well known and admired and respected by local audiences, uh, which probably also accounts for the particularly full auditorium this evening. Let me tell you who's going to be playing in this work, seeing as it's a combined effort between faculty and um, students. First violins are Suzanne Martens, Christian Brand, Francis Whitehead, Zoe Kutsia, Shahima Lake, and Peter Joubert. Second violins are Farida Bakharova. She's leading Catherine Stiff, Bevan Snyders, Isel Erasmus, Joshua Louis, and Zoe Lightly on the second violin. Juan Miguel Hernandez is leading Alinka Rowe, Edgar Francis, and Julia Dukakis on the violin. And then Peter Martens, Lois Bosov, and Ethan Lawson are playing cello. Francis Levanderis and Milan Dowleth bass. And then our winds are Damar McGill, and Dong Yo Kim, flutes, Dwight Parry and Brian Lyons, oboe, Ferdinand Steiner and Bryce Newcomer, clarinet, Andrew Brady and Simon Ball, bassoons, Jeffrey Pilkington, horn, Nicole van Veek, timpani, Alexandra Beaver and Celeste. And there you can see them leading onto the stage here in the Ender Hall tonight.
triumph for Alexander Buzlov, cellist, and Pedro Carniero coming to you live from the 16th Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. That was the Shostakovich Cello Concerto, number one in E-flat major. And I can't resist but to read a quick joke to you that uh, one of the tech crew sent to me. Shostakovich gave me the score, this is Rostropovich for whom the score was written, of his first cello concerto. And in four days, I memorized it and played it for him while he accompanied me on the piano. We were so happy, we drank a little vodka together. We then played it again, not so perfectly, and drank more vodka. The third time, I think I played the Sansons concerto while he accompanied his own concerto, and we were very happy. So that's a little story from Rostropovich for whom this concerto was written. In a few moments, I'm going to be talking to Weston Sprott, who's faculty member and visiting artist, trombonist. And while he gets ready, we're going to take just a moment break. The one thing that you want to, to give these students is just the exposure. They just need to know what's out there because it's hard to reach for something when you don't know what it is that you're reaching for. The Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival needs your support. In an environment where funding for education in the performing arts is difficult to secure, the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival has run an annual festival for 10 consecutive days in the month of July since 2004. Chamber music is an ideal forum for multiracial community interaction and social cohesion and the SICMF is proud to be making a difference to the quality of life and potential employability of around 300 music students annually. In terms of repertoire, uh, I think it's fair to say there's no other festival quite like this. You realize the desire to learn is very high and you don't want to extinguish that flame, you want to, to, to feed it. You want students to, to want to take advantage of learning. The SICMF has established trusts in both the USA and UK, and it is now possible for citizens of South Africa, the USA and the UK to make tax-deductible donations to the SICMF in their respective countries. All banking details for SICMF donations can be found on our website, www.sicmf.coza. Sit back and relax in the comfort of your home and watch the SICMF faculty concerts right here on our live streaming channel from 6 to 15 July. The Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival, where world-class performance and first world music education enable and uplift. And we're coming to you live from the foyer of the Endler Hall from the SICMF during the interval of the seventh faculty concert. And my guest tonight is faculty artist and trombonist Weston Sprott, who was our Tyrannosaurus Sue and Bruce Adolph's Cretaceous Concerto the other night. So let me set the scene and tell you a little more about him. He enjoys an exciting career that includes orchestral, chamber and solo performances, as well as numeral educational outreach and advocacy efforts. He's the acting principal trombone of New York's Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, of which he's been a member since 2005. And he's been recognized as an excellent trombonist with a sense of style and phrasing that takes a back seat to no one. I think he's uh, squirming a little bit in the seat next to me, having his praises read out in this way. Sprott performs frequently with the Philadelphia Orchestra. He recently held a position with the Zurich Opera, Philharmonia, and has appeared with numerous other major orchestras. And as a soloist, Sprott has been featured throughout the US, Europe, and Asia. He's a dedicated and tireless teacher, and he maintains teaching studios at several New York area institutions. He heads the Brass University at Mann College and holds faculty positions at Bard College, Rutgers University, and Juilliard Pre-College. And he also serves on the faculties of the SICMF, PRISM, Curtis Institute of Music Summerfest, National Youth Orchestra USA, and NYO2. He's an active speaker and writer advocating for diversity, equity, and inclusion in classical music. He's an artist clinician for Antoine Courtois trombones, and he's designed and played the new Creation New York model trombone. Performances and interviews with Mr. Sprott have been seen and heard on PBS's Great Performances, NPR's Performance Today, MSNBC, and Sirius Satellite Radio, and now the live stream from the SICMF. Weston, it's very nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. So first question, how did it feel playing a T-Rex the other night? 
It was a lot of fun. It was actually my second opportunity to do the piece. The first time I did it was a couple of years ago at, um, at Alice Tully Hall at Lincoln Center in right. New York. It was part of the Chamber Music Society and actually had the, the privilege of doing it with the composer as the narrator. Uh, this was a little bit different, which was great. We had uh, Mr. T, who's a local legend here in Stellenbosch. And of course, it's always great to collaborate with my colleagues. And I think it's a really fun piece because uh, it's kind of audience friendly and it also gives a lot of other people opportunities to shine. So the trombone is the T-Rex, of course, but then we also have solos by the bassoon and the French horn and the, and the clarinet. It was a really fun performance. Yeah, it's a, it's a very evocative piece and you're quite right. I wish it could be used in, in outreach uh, a little bit more, perhaps. Um, the Cape Philharmonic Orchestra here, I think it would be a great addition to their repertoire, getting Absolutely. kids more excited about classical music. It's kind music. of like a a more updated version of Peter and the Wolf, yes, for example. Yes, exactly. That, that's yeah. precisely. Or an, or an updated, a prehistoric Something like Peter that, and exactly. The Wolf, a Cretaceous version yeah. of it. Yeah, so exactly. just to talk a little bit more about your career as a trombonist. Uh, where did it all begin? Can you think back to perhaps a seminal moment or two that started it all off for you? Well, I grew up in Houston, Texas, and I started playing when I was in the sixth grade. I was about 10 years old when I started. And, uh, On the trombone. Yeah, I started playing the trombone when I was when I was a 10-year-old. And so now it's been 26 years of trombone playing. Gosh. Uh, I went on to Indiana University in Curtis before joining the Metropolitan Opera 14 years ago. This just finished my 14th season there. And over the years, my career has evolved pretty, pretty dramatically. Uh, just recently, I started a position as the Dean of Preparatory Division at the Juilliard School. And so I'm now holding two full-time jobs, one as a performer and one as an administrator. Right. Uh, what does that entail administratively? I, it's a lot of teaching, a lot of, I guess, organization then, well, administrative responsibilities, but uh, that's important for you, I suppose. You don't sure. feel it detracts too much from your performing and teaching right. responsibilities. Well, for the last several years, I've done a lot of teaching, you know, which for me manifests itself as a lot of private lesson teaching at different universities and colleges. Uh, but this position as a dean at Juilliard is a much more administrative position. So I'm, I'm leading two different programs. One is a Juilliard pre-college, which is about 300 students. And another is a music advancement program there, which is about 70 students. So, you know, doing all of the different things you can imagine as an administrator, whether that's uh, managing the budget and financial aid and admissions to dealing with programming and fundraising and all these different types of things. So it's a, it's a very involved job, but I think a lot of, a lot of my, uh, my work there is informed by the work that I've done as both a performer and as a teacher. Advocacy work that you've done, equality is very important in classical music and diversity, and that's perhaps a bit of a um, challenge we're facing in South Africa at the moment, is how to um, perhaps uh, make the face of classical music here more representative of our larger population. Uh, are there any sort of experiences that you've had that you think would be useful for us to refer to here in South Africa or that we could sort of take on board in our own efforts to make right. classical music more inclusive? Sure. I mean, I think it's a conversation that's happening in this country and my country and basically every place in the world that, mm -hmm. that really cares about making sure that you're building a culture that's inclusive. Uh, I think the Stellenbosch International Chair Music Festival does a really good job of that. They, they make a point to, to be very diverse with their programming, also diverse with their faculty, diverse with the, with the, uh, with the student body, and also with the repertoire they choose. I, I've, always, I've always thought of it as a point of pride that this festival makes a point to, to commission composers that are, that, are, that are local. A lot of those are black African composers uh, who write really great music and bring in great guest artists like we had the other night. Uh, and then, for example, I was here one year, we had Desmond Tutu as a narrator. There's been so many different amazing things. So I think, actually, I think this festival is taking a leadership role in doing that. And I, I, I can't speak for what happens at other points during the classical music calendar of this country, but I think if other places will take, will follow the lead that this, that this festival is setting, a lot of great work can be done because a large part of what inclusion is about is not only making people feel welcome in your space, mm. but also giving them a reason to want to be in that space. Yeah. And so when people come to a concert here, for example, and they see black and brown faces on the stage and they realize that some of the music is written by people who look like them. They it suddenly have role inclusion. models, which they perhaps didn't realize they exactly. had. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very glad to hear that uh, and that you also feel that this festival really makes a big effort in sort of Di promoting diversity in music and, and making sure that classical music here becomes a sustainable program as well. Correct. Especially with bringing in all these sort of um, overseas role models, people like yourself as well, right. who can really sort of help to grow that here. Yeah. Uh, it's all very exciting. Have you had very inspiring engagements with the students while you've been here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's this is my, my ninth time. Ninth being, time, gosh. Being at uh, SICMF and every year is inspiring, inspiring always. In, in, some ways all, in some ways the same and in some ways very different because of course 
the, the names and the faces of the students change and evolve over the years, of course. You know, most of the kids do the program for a few years and then move on to other things. Are you able uh, to build relationships with those students who come for several years in a row, perhaps? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, I have some students, or former students from this festival, who are now older and often doing their, their own thing professionally, which is really great. Angus Peterson is one of them. We had we had lunch the other day, and on Monday I'm going to visit with Ashley Lauskieter, who was uh, a student here during my first couple of years while I was teaching, and now he's he's teaching his own programs. I'm actually going to go and visit two of the schools where he teaches on Monday and meet some of the students and uh, and some of the teachers, maybe play a little bit for them. So it's it's really great to see students who have who started off at the festival and have now evolved and have grown up and are doing things on their own and taking a leadership role in their own community. Fantastic. It's really uh, kind of the fruits of hard work, if you like. This is the yeah. 16th version of the festival, and I guess in some ways it's really sort of bearing fruit with many of the um, alumni from the festival who are sort of going out right. and forging their own musical careers now. Yeah, it's amazing to have been around long enough to see that change. You know, yes. I, I remember Ashley, for example, was was in the uh, the festival concert orchestra my first year, and a good friend of mine, Ken Tompkins, who's the principal trombonist of the Detroit Symphony, donated a trombone to a student who he said, he said, Weston, you'll know who the right person is when you get there, but find someone who's really inspired and is really working hard, and Ashley was that person. And so it's cool to see that at that point in time, nine years ago, we were helping him out because he seemed like a student who was in need and very inspired, and now he's paying it forward by doing something very similar himself in his own community. Yeah, that's excellent to hear. When you work with the students um, in the chamber music groups, are there particular aspects of your sort of teaching philosophy you try to impart to them? Are there um, very um, sort of a few top things you would like to sort of get across while you're here? Sure. I mean, I think for one is to find a way to enjoy the music, to have joy, because I think we talk a lot about work ethic and a lot of basic things, whether it's pitch and rhythm and tone quality and things like this, but your desire to work on all of those things is comes from a love and a passion for the music. Um, also, my teaching philosophy is definitely not a, a one-size-fits-all. Every student is different, every group is different, and so I really try my best not to enter the room with a preconceived idea of what I want to teach. I see what the students bring to the table and then I try to to, um, to tailor something to what the particular needs are of that group. Mm -hmm. I'm really pleased to hear you mentioning sort of the enjoyment and the passion of, of music because that's um, come across so clearly in these faculty concerts. Is that Absolutely. A special sort of camaraderie and intimacy amongst the performers has just been so inspiring to watch. It's a pity I have to spend a lot of it out yeah, here yeah, it's a shame. Uh, on the podium in a way, but when I've been able to sneak into the hall, it's really been remarkable to sort of absorb that atmosphere. And I can imagine for students who've perhaps never experienced that kind of high level of musicianship before, it right. must be kind of a, almost a career-changing experience for them. Absolutely. I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head about joy. Uh, music, music is fun, but it's not all fun in games. You know, there's a, a certain of hard, element of work that has to go into it, but the end result of that can be this really joyful, exciting, exciting thing. And it's important for students to find that and for professionals to find that as well, because work without joy is drudgery. And no one, you know, the, in a, the pursuit of becoming excellent on your instrument and many times can be a solitary pursuit. You sit in a room and close the door and practice for hours Absolutely. and hours on end. And if you're not enjoying that, it's not a really good time. So. Yeah. And performance is where it all comes together, of course. It is important to perform, and I think some musicians think, well, they must just sort of practice forever until the music is perfect. But performance is such an important part of consolidating the music, and right. that act of sharing is part of the learning as well, because you will, it'll reveal all sorts of other things that you can then take back into the practice room with you to sort of take it to the next level almost. Absolutely. I mean, it's performing is different than practicing. There, there are a lot of elements that change uh, that can be the acoustic, that can be your own personal sense of anxiety or nervousness. There, there are a lot of different things that come together when you step out on stage and you only get one chance to do it. And there's an audience of people watching live in the hall, or in this case, sometimes live streaming all over Absolutely. the world. Um, and so it's important you to, to do that from with some degree of regularity because you learn a lot from being placed under that type of pressure. Yeah. You learn a lot about the music, but you also learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. And just going back to your own performing career, are there uh, particular highlights coming up over the, your next few months' engagements that you're particularly looking forward to? Sure. Um, you know, I, I've had the great fortune or pleasure of being here for the last 10 days or so, but uh, next week I'll be heading off to Lake Tahoe, uh, which is in the western part of the United States, kind of on the border of Nevada, California. We're going to be doing tons of concerts there. So I'm 
I'm really looking forward to that. I'm getting to play a solo with the orchestra. We're going to do a low brass concerto grosso with the orchestra, which Very is a pretty nice. unusual thing. Three trombones and tuba as soloist in front of the orchestra. Then a whole list of great orchestral works like uh, Tchaikovsky 5, Brahms 4, Schubert 9, The Firebird. It's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of work. <laughs> and then your time in South Africa, um, have you had much chance, the number of times you've been here at the SICMF, to explore? Have you oh, absolutely. done much sightseeing? Absolutely. Any uh, particular uh, things that stand out? My, my wife and a, and a friend of ours joined us actually before the festival started. We did a little bit of vacation, so we had an opportunity to spend a few days in the Kruger Park and then a few days in Cape Town and of course Stellenbosch. We did. We, sort of did. we, back to the, we basically the saw everything. We saw a couple of leopards, we saw rhino, a hippo, you name it. We, yeah. we saw everything except for cheetah. Oh, right. Which, well, they are yeah, very elusive. But you'll have to um, Yeah, of course. And then Stellenbosch, again. great. Great wine and food, so that's you know that's yeah. one of one of the hundred reasons why people should come to Stellenbosch. It's a very exciting place to be, and thank you for enriching the festival in so many ways, and for continuing to do that. And not just that, but classical music worldwide as well, and Absolutely. really sort of improving the sort of diversity and representation within classical music. It, it is Absolutely. so important, and for making it feel like a safe and secure and creative space for everybody. Thank Weston, you. very nice to talk to you. Thanks for making Same time you. for us. All right, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the okay. festival. You too, thanks. Thank you. My guest this evening was faculty artist and trombonist Weston Sprott. Let me tell you a bit more about our next work on the program, the Grand Duo Concertante for Violin and Bass by the Italian composer Giovanni Bottesini, who lived from 1821 to 1889. Now, the Italian Bottasini's skills and double bass earned him a place alongside Paganini, Liszt, Chopin, and Joachim as a model of romantic virtuosity. Legend has it that the young Bottasini, having earned a cash prize from the Milan Conservatory, uncovered a bass under a rubbish heap in a puppet theater. And this instrument turned out to have been built by Carlo Giuseppe Testore, one of Milan's finest luthiers. And throughout his career, Bottasini was quite content to do with only three strings on his testore bass and tune the whole instrument a whole higher tone higher than standard. In addition to public performance, Bottasini was active as a composer of opera and chamber music and contributed key works to the bass repertoire. He was also a renowned conductor wielding the baton for the Cairo premiere of Verdi's Aida in 1871. And this grand duo concertante was completed in 1880 and was actually intended for two basses. The version to be presented this evening with only one bass part, the other was rewritten for violin, was adapted by Camillo Sivori. He was a protege of Paganini's. And the Paris premiere featured Bottasini and his friend, former classmate and great professional rival and double bass, Luigi Negri, the two greatest bass players of the 19th century. That must have been quite something to behold. And so this grand duo concertante for violin and bass is by Bottasini. It's going to be played by Maladin Adkins, violin, and Ushia Martinez, Botana bass, with Pedro Caniero conducting. I hope he's recovered after that Shostakovich. So let's take a peek inside the hall to see how things are filling up as we get ready for this mini concerto. You'll see somewhat reduced forces after that very large concerto we had earlier. I should warn you that there's going to be a small prize giving ceremony now just before this next piece. You can see next to the microphone stand and the podium, uh, there's a table with something interesting on it. As you can see, the people are still filling up the hall. A very appreciative audience here in Stellenbosch tonight for this final faculty concert. Tomorrow night we have three, uh, we have an orchestral concert coming up for the next three evenings. So that's going to look very different. The stage is going to be very, very uh, packed, both on stage and in auditorium, as I imagine many of the parents will be coming to support their kids, those who are in town. Um, but it's going to be a very exciting concert tomorrow night. Big music, uh, viola concerto for um, viola and orchestra by Schnittke, and before that a piece by Matthijs van Dijk, dance. It's going to be conducted by his brother Zandi, and then after the interval, to use that magnificent instrument you can see in the back of the hall there, the organ, the Sansons Third Symphony, and that's going to feature Zorada Temming on the organ. So that's the first Festival Symphony Orchestra concert tomorrow night. 
On Saturday night, the Festival Concert Orchestra is going to play music by Borodin and Fauré, also Saint-Saëns is Dance Macabre, uh, so quite a sort of Russian flavor, Borodin, Steps of Central Asia, the Polovsian dancers, and that Saint-Saëns work I mentioned. And then on the final evening of the festival, Sunday evening, the Festival Symphony Orchestra Concert 2, Zandi van Dijk is again going to be the conductor, but this time there's going to be a trumpet concerto, but again the organ symphony in the second half of that concert. If you've just joined us, let me remind you that the next work on the program tonight is the Grandeur Concertante for violin and bass by Bottesini, and it's going to feature Madeleine Adkins' violin and Ushia Martinez Botana bass, and Pedro Caniero is going to be conducting once again. But just before that, there's going to be a prize-giving ceremony. That's what some of that clobber on the right-hand stage of the stage is all about. Good evening once again. We can now carry on with the rest of the awards for this year's Chamber Music Festival. So, we already awarded the Baroque Star Award and he's basically at the airport already. Um, the next award that we're, gonna, that we're gonna give out go to participants who have been at the festival for the past five years. Each year, they travel from Johannesburg to Cape Town by train. They make a road trip out of it. They travel by train. The usual train journey takes about 24 hours. Their journey this year lasted 38 hours. Just before Kimberley, the train had to stop due to cable theft. They had to get off of the train onto a bus and spent the next 12 hours on a bus all the way to Paul. I eventually went to fetch them in Wellington at half past one in the morning. So this award goes, the Snail Rail Award, we call it the Snail Rail Award, goes to Louise and Marlene Bosov.
they spend 15 hours on a bus. Big difference. <laughs> the next award goes to a faculty member who was abducted from the airport by a driver from another department of the university. By chance, some of these guys. Then the next one, if you've been following, if you've been following the festival's Instagram page, you would have noticed some pretty funky looking socks. So the award for the funkiest socks goes to the following three socketeers. Miguel Hernandez, Gareth Libber, and our wonderful live stream presenter, John Woodland. <laughs> Only does he arguably have the best hair, he really knows how to whip his hair back and forth. Stay tuned to witness this for yourself in the last work on tonight's program. The headbanging award goes to David Cohen. because I'm worth it. Now, after dropping his bow in the Brahms Quintet on Monday night, a short clip, a short clip of this faculty member's genius has gone viral. He dropped his bow, played the harmony as a pizzicato, then picked up his bow and continued as if nothing happened. The hashtag trending award goes to Zandi van Dijk. This participant has been coming to the festival for the per past nine years. Three years of these, he's been the concert master of FSO, and before that, he was the concert master of FCO as well. So, for a great violinist and a really great supporter of the festival, Jeffrey Armstrong. This next one we've called the Ninja Award. It goes to the stunning Nina Schumann, who has once again blown us away with her programming of this year's festival, wowed us with her concert dresses, and is simply the ultimate ninja warrior. Nina Schumann. And then the last award of this year's ceremony is a super special award. Um, this year we've decided to award an SICMF Imaginary Honorary Doctorate. This one goes to a faculty member who's also been at the, at the festival for the past nine years. Um, he has been instrumental in the founding of the Friends of the SICMF Trust in the USA. And above his jobs as teacher, performer, 
Uh, he's also recently been appointed as the Dean of Juilliard's Pre-College and Music Advancement Program. The SICMF Imaginary Honorary Doctorate goes to Weston Sprott. We'll just have to give Alexander Buzlov his wine at another stage. Enjoy the rest of the program. And so after all of that, we're back now for the Bottasini Grandio Concertante featuring Madeline Adkins, violin, Ushe Martinez, botana, bass, and Pedro Carniero, conductor and they'll emerge at any second for this work by Botticini.
motivation. I suppose it's not every day one hears a double bass concerto, or a double bass violin double concerto, but that was the grandeur concertante by Bottasini, and the stars of the show there were Madeline Adkins' violin and Ufla Martinez bottom of bass, and Pedro Caniero was conducting. Looks like an encore. Let's hold our breath. down on stage here in the Enla Hall, Madeleine Adkins and Ushia Martinez Botina, Pedro Canero conducting and we heard Andre Bielof, Jordan Brooks, Craig Williams, violin one, Suzanne Martens, Catherine Stiff and Tamlin Harker, violin two, Zandi van Dijk, Remy Ludic Viola and Peter Martens, Chris Niapa cello, Francis Leverendis, the other bass player. And so tonight's final faculty concert concludes with music not commonly encountered in the concert hall. This is an arrangement now for four cellos of Thunderstruck, a song by Australian heavy metal band ACDC. This was written in 1990 by brothers Angus and Malcolm Young. It was released as a single lifted from the album The Razor's Edge. The famous opening guitar figure was an idea that Angus Young had been playing around with bouncing off the open B string of the guitar, reminiscent in origin of the famous exercise-based string-skipping riff from Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses, which had been released two years earlier. This song is named for a toy that the band members recalled from childhood called Thunderstreak, and the Thunderstreak was a stylized, elastic band-powered contraption resembling an aeroplane-like boat featuring hydrofoils that allowed it to travel across the water at speed. And so this song, Thunderstruck by ACDC, is now arranged here for four celli by John Walton. And we're going to hear Alexander Buzlov if he's returned from the Shostakovich world, David Cohen, Peter Martens, and Colette Brand. And Zandi van Dijk is going to be conducting an ensemble of SICMF faculty and participants. Incidentally, I'm very pleased with my new socks that arrived a little bit earlier. Thanks very much to the team for organizing that. I'll be wearing those tomorrow night. So let's take a look inside the Endler Hall, perhaps for the final time tonight, for this piece for four celli by ACDC, arranged by John Walton and featuring four of our premier artists, Alexander Buzlov, David Cohen, Peter Martens, and Colette Brand. Zandi van Dijk will be conducting. We're entering now the last three days of this year's Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. If you happen to be in Stellenbosch tomorrow in town, 
There's a student ensemble concert happening tomorrow at one o'clock. And then again at five o'clock, the percussion groups will be doing their thing in the FISMA Hall. And Weston Sprott, whom we chatted to earlier and who was awarded that honorary invisible doctorate by the SICMF, will be giving a trombone masterclass at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Gosh, well, how many players are there? This work received something like 150 million YouTube views for its arrangement by that duo Two Cellos, who've been marvelously successful and have made the cello even more of a sort of sexy and desirable instrument. And they've released a great number of albums and uh, have really done a lot of good work to sort of popularize classical music. So I'm not sure if you've watched that video on YouTube. You should perhaps check it out while you're waiting for the stage to assemble. Don't go too far away from our live stream, though. But it's really quite exciting. It's the two cellists. They go into this um, sort of old Baroque concert hall and they, s they start playing uh, what sounds sort of like very um, elegant sort of Baroque music and then they launch into this thunderstruck, this ACDC arrangement. And of course, the audience from that time, from I guess the early sort of uh, 19th century, the late 18th century, they're appalled. They don't know what's going on. And, and they finish this work, you know, by which stage they've completely sort of wrecked their bows and they're on their backs playing their cellos, this incredibly virtuosic piece. And there's just this stunned silence at the end from this sort of audience from long ago and the video just ends there. I think we'll get a very different reaction from our audience tonight here in the Endler Hall. I think tonight's been planned very well, almost like a the sort of perfect three-course musical menu, starting off with that uh, lighter work from Vivaldi, the concerto for four violins, and then the Shostakovich was the meaty main course, his cello concerto number one, and then the dolce dessert was Bottasini's grand duo concertante, and now the digestif afterwards, uh, Jägermeister or tequila or limoncello, whatever your poison is, thunderstruck for four celli. This work by ACDC that's been specially arranged for the SICMF by John Walton. And tonight is going to be featuring Alexander Buzlov, David Cohen, Peter Martens and Colette Brand. And Zandi van Dijk is going to be conducting this ensemble of SICMF faculty and participants. Now you'd better get used to the stage being this full because this is what it's going to be like for the next three nights, the student orchestral concerts, where every square centimetre of the stage is packed, trying to fit as many students on as possible, uh, which is really creates an incredible atmosphere. And it is quite fun for some of these lush romantic works, uh, things like um, the Saint-Saëns Dance Macabre, the Saint-Saëns Organ Symphony that we're going to hear with a massive orchestra on the stage. It's going to sound wonderful. And so in just a moment, the four star cellists will be making their appearance. Alexander Buzlov, David Cohen, Peter Martens and Colette Brand with conductor Zandi van Dijk. Thunderstruck for four celli by ACDC and here specially arranged for the 16th Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. One could hear a pin drop.
concert hall became a rock concert. If you've just joined us, you're probably very confused because this is still the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. But let's make that go viral. Thunderstruck for Four Celli by ACDC, arranged by John Walton, and they're featuring Alexander Buzlov, David Cohen, Peter Martens, and Colette Brand in unconventional attire with Sandy van Dijk, conductor with a bow, yes, not a baton, accompanied by an ensemble of SICMF faculty and participants. And so that brings us to the end of this series of seven faculty concerts as part of the 2019 SICMF. We'll be back tomorrow night, Friday at 8 p.m., for the first of the student orchestral concerts, featuring again two of my heroes, Zandi van Dijk, conductor, and Gareth Luber, viola. The program comprises Zandi's brother, Matthijs van Dijk's dance, and that's followed by the concerto for viola and orchestra, composed by the Soviet-German composer Alfred Schnittke. And after the interval, the magnificent Symphony No. 3 in C minor, Opus 78, for the first time at this SICMF, hearing the organ in that organ symphony by Sansans featuring Zorada Temming. And that's the first concert of the Festival Symphony Orchestra tomorrow night at 8 p.m. If you happen to be joining us in Stellenbosch for the day, then there are two student ensemble concerts at 1 and 5 p.m. and a trombone masterclass, as I mentioned earlier, with Western Sprott at 3. Madeleine Atkins will also be in conversation with my guest tomorrow evening, Juan Miguel Hernandez, at 7 p.m. And so, thank you again for joining us. Hope your blood pressure coped with that last piece from me and our production team here at the 2019 SICMF. This is John Woodland wishing you good night and good luck. <laughs>